Ready when you are. <laughs> Holy cow. We have a very famous experiment which has been done for a long time in Nottingham, firing a candle out of a musket that is 156 years old. <laughs> and we've always looked at it as a demonstration in a lecture, but now with a high-speed camera we can watch how the gun operates in slow motion. And as before, it's quite a revelation. We've noticed things which we've never seen before. I've got our friends in the glass blowing department to make a, a, a sort of demonstration piece. This represents the barrel and the, uh, the nipple or where the percussion cap goes. And it was loaded the way that I loaded it. Put some powder in. And at this stage, we would put the wad in. My finger represents the hammer of the gun is blocking up the touch hole. That's rammed home. And then we would put the, the bullet, and in this case with our candle, and then to hold the bullet in, another wad. And that would be the way it would be in the in its proper use. This bullet, of course, would be a, 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 a spherical leaden ball normally. At this point, we would put on the, the percussion cap. So remove the hammer, put the percussion cap on. Right. The hammer of the weapon comes down, strikes that. which sets off the high explosive in the bottom of there, sets fire to the gunpowder in the touch hole or the nipple, and then burns down to the main charge here. And when that starts to go off, you get a, a rapid reaction and a lot of heat, and it's got to go somewhere. And of course, it forces the bullet out there. And at the same time, gives us a nice firework effect. Not visible normally, but coming out of the touch hole, uh, which I think we can pick up on the uh, shot on a camera. The gun has a hammer, which you have to pull back before you can fire it. And it's got a very strong spring. I can hardly pull it back at all. And the thing that was really surprising for me was that when the gun fired, the hammer went down and the force of the explosion pushed it right back again, something that I need both hands to do. So when you watch it in the slow motion, it looks almost like a ball bouncing. But I've tried to pull that thing back, and it's pretty hard. The other thing that is interesting is that you can see that when the hammer hits, the actual explosion takes place in three stages. First of all, you have the detonator cap, which goes off very quickly. Then the powder in the nipple catches fire and produces clouds of smoke and then the main charge in the barrel goes off and a large streak of flame shoots out backwards. At the other end of the lecture hall is the projectile from the gun hitting the target and for our lecture demonstrations we obviously are not firing a bullet. It could ricochet and cause all sorts of problems. So we use a candle. And what is amazing about this experiment is that even a candle, the sort of wax candle that you burn at Christmas, even a small piece of that candle can go through multiple layers of wood. Usually when we do the experiment, there are clouds of smoke and we don't really look at the target till everything is cleared away. With a high-speed camera, we can actually watch the candle arrive. Now, because the candle is not bullet-shaped, but is rather a cylinder, and also because the barrel is smooth, each time you fire it, it comes out a different way. So sometimes it goes straight, sometimes it falls around in the air. So each time it hits the target, it's different. 
and sometimes it even hits sideways. But the real surprise for me was that some of the wadding, the cotton wool, which is so light, actually made it across the lecture theatre, a distance of probably 10 or 15 metres, and hit the target. <laughs> because I don't know if you've ever tried to throw a piece of cotton wool, but it, you Come can't on. throw it at all, it's so light. Holy cow. I collect these from years gone by, and you can see this one here, some wadding did get there, and it's stuck on with wax. This one, the candle broke up. One piece stopped here, and the other piece made really quite a large hole. In fact, there may have been more than one piece. And one of the times when we fired the musket and filmed the target with the high-speed camera, the candle did fragment, and you can see the different bits arriving at slightly different times because they're travelling at different speeds because they have different air resistance. And this one here made a pretty clean hole. Uh, but you can see this is hard wood. This is not thin pieces, and it's punched holes without any difficulty at all. So if you think, if that's what a candle can do, imagine what a lead bullet could have done. So you heard the professor mention there that he likes to keep the targets as mementos, but not this time. This time I've managed to sneak them away. Here's the first one with the single shot. Pretty close to the target, wasn't he? And here's the one where the candle broke into pieces. And there's still bits of wax and wadding all attached to it. Now, if you'd fancy having one of them, I'm going to pop them on eBay and you can have a bid and maybe you can have it as a bit of periodic videos memorabilia. So thanks to Jim for helping me sneak them out. And also, uh, he signed them and dated them. And by the way, if you enjoy the musket and some of the other explosive stuff you see on periodic videos, the university actually runs a public lecture called Thunder and Lightning that they do in Nottingham all the time, sometimes it tours around. So if you ever have the opportunity and you see the Thunder and Lightning lecture advertised, definitely worth checking out.